Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of D Thoughts. And today we are talking about Fire Force Episode 10, The Promise. But hey, before we get into it, I do want to give a quick shout out to those of you who shared last week's video over on Twitter, namely at GonGonGalaxy123, at Fate Caden, and at Nacho Gachardo. Thanks so much for sharing last week's video, everybody. It is super appreciated. And if you too would like to have your name shouted out in next week's Fire Force video, then be sure to share this video around on the internet and then tag me at Jojo Talks Too Much and I will be sure to shout your name out in next week's Fire Force video. Now then, with that said, we actually have quite a few things that I want to get into this week. We got to talk about the state of the eighth. We got to talk about the Church of Soul, AKA Amaterasu. We got to talk about some pacing and art choices in this week's episode, as well as the big reunion with Joker. Now, I'm going to go ahead and start with the pacing and art choices, since that will sort of color the rest of this week's episode. Let's go ahead and start with the pacing. Now, this is an issue with the episode in general, but I would also say is a big issue I have with the show, and it's not something I noticed initially, it's something I noticed as we went on. And it went from being more of a positive about the show to eventually becoming not so much a negative, but just something worth noting. And that's that the pace is astonishingly quick. Uh, we have gotten to a point in the story that most shows would have really taken their time to get to. Now, this can be both a good and a bad thing. You never want your show to be dragging its feet trying to get to plot points that maybe another show could have gotten to a lot quicker, a la Fire Force. Fire Force getting to the point where we have the big, re we have a big reveal about uh, a villain. We have a big re uh, twist on one of the characters' pasts. We're getting to the point where we're already kind of like, like no, we're aware who the big bad is. We are now trying to hunt them down, and it just feels like the story is really reaching a, a big moment. Like, like, and we're only on episode ten. This feels like something you would get to around like maybe episode twenty. So it's pretty quick. Now, I don't know if that's the manga itself or if that's the anime. Now, honestly, and this will come across as rude. Know that I don't mean it to be rude, but I don't really care if this is how the manga is paced. It's still quickly paced and I'm, it's not a bad thing. It's also not a good thing. I just don't really know how to feel about it. It's kind of quick and I feel the pacing being as quick as it is, is likely part of the reason why I have a hard time really nailing down any of these characters as, well, characters. I find a lot of them outside of Shinra are kind of bland. Like even characters that I like, like Maki and Obi, I, I can't really say a lot about them as characters. Maki doesn't like getting called Ogre and she's a strong girl, but that's all she is. Like that's all she has going for her right now. Obi is a big tough dude with a heart of gold, but that's all he's got going for him right now. It's, it's not, it, it's not that they're bad characters and it's not that the pace is bad, but the pace is so quick that we don't really get a whole lot of time with these characters. I know more about Hibana than I do about our main group. It's not a bad thing. It's just worth noting. Now, mind you, the pacing does mean that we get to a lot of the more bigger and more fun parts of the show, a la the fights, a hell of a lot quicker. So I do appreciate that. It's not, again, like I said, it's not necessarily bad, it's just sort of a mixed bag. The plot being so fast means we get to a lot more of the action scenes a lot quicker, but it also means that we sort of sacrifice that at the cost of having some more fleshed out characters. They're not terrible characters and I do like them. It's just, I feel that they could have been fleshed out more. We could have gotten to know them a lot better by now. And I don't have a whole lot to say on this, but you've probably seen it by the screenshot that I'm using, but there's some weird art choices in this week's episode. Now I get it. When you're doing an anime, you don't necessarily have the time to do a little bit more of the finer details, especially in long shots. So I, I believe me, I get it. <laughs> But we have this scene. Now, this screenshot is from a scene that actually lasts a, a long enough that you notice something's wrong. And that's that the characters have no face and they actually carry on a conversation like this where the characters don't have faces, but they're still talking and moving 
but there's no faces. And again, it's a long shot, so it's sort of forgivable. But when you're doing a long shot, you don't necessarily hold on it while characters are talking. And it's a little too, it, you typically would not like draw in faces if the characters are really far away. But this is not like a super wide shot. This is kind of a medium close up. Like it's not, or me, it's a medium wide shot. Like it's not, it, it's just close enough that it looks odd. And this happens not just once, but twice in the episode that I was like, oh, that's a weird choice. Again, I get it. So they're trying to save they're trying to save their effort for a lot of the more bigger scenes and believe me, I understand. Uh, it's not a knock. It's just again something I should probably point out. Now, if you think I didn't like the episode, you're wrong <laughs> because I just wanted to get those things out of the way so that I could talk about the stuff that I do like. Namely, let's go ahead and talk about the state of the eighth. Now, the eighth have gone from a small group of folk to a a, a much bigger group that actually s expands into other uh, other factions of the fire force like we have hibana we have uh karam like we have these characters who are not technically part of the eighth but do feel as though they are part of the family and the eighth functioning as this sort of ragtag bunch that don't really fit in anywhere else but together form a a family and an unexpected one at that that dynamic keeps these characters who, again, are we don't know a whole ton about them as characters, but their dynamic with each other does make them a lot more endearing than they may have otherwise been. I do think that the family aspect of the eighth keeps the show fun and keep and makes you care about these characters who are otherwise sort of one note. Like, especially with with that scene at the end. the the, the scene at the end of this episode with them having dinner, is exceptionally well done and actually shifted the the episode's rank from one thing to another which i'll get to at the end of the video but it's it it really shows the 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 care that these characters have for each other in particular the scene with uh hinawa and shinra where they're they're cooking dinner together and it's this sort of awkward pause as you would have when you're trying to bring up something sort of awkward before Hinawa eventually says like, listen, man, like, I want you to be able to talk to me. Like, you, you can talk to me, you can talk to Obi if, if you're feeling some kind of way. The Eighth isn't just a group of people who work together, we are a family. If, you, if there's something wrong, I'd rather you tell me because I want you to be comfortable here. Like, that line made me love Hinawa the most, because I'm like, finally, like, he gets to be a bit of a softie. Like, like he's a hard-ass for sure, but he, he's only a hard-ass because he cares. And I think that was, just just that end scene with, with the group was really well done. Likewise, the reunion with Joker was pretty intense and is probably, the reunion with Joker itself is probably my second favorite scene in the episode, whereas, again, like, the meeting with the group at the, or the meeting with the eighth at the end, for dinner is easily my favorite part of the episode. But the reunion with Joker leads into a lot of different avenues that the show can now go down, specifically since it talks about how uh, the, wh what were they calling them? The White Cloaks or whatever that, or whatever it is. The, uh, they're like this, the, the guys who are with working with the Evangelist, they are specifically after Shinra for his uh, Adola Burstle, which we now know for sure is it's, they're specifically gunning for Shinra. We know that for a fact now, uh, thanks to Joker, who I can't tell if Joker is necessarily working with them because he's like giving Shinra like just sort of insider information that maybe Shinra shouldn't have. And the way he talks about this group, it makes it seem like maybe maybe Joker and that that like that other dude that he works with, the, the computer guy, maybe they're like not with the White Cloaks. I thought they were, maybe that was obvious and I'm just noticing that now, I have no clue. Um, maybe they're working with them, maybe they're working against them, maybe they're a third party in this whole thing, I have no clue, but I do know that anytime Joker is on screen, I get excited because this character is a lot of fun. He's crazy, he kind of reminds me of like Stein from Soul Eater, obviously same creator, but if Stein was evil <laughs> like that's more twisted than stein already was like that's the vibe i get from joker and um it joker brings up something huge and that is that show shinra's brother is very much alive and that's that is something that we learned a while ago but not only is he alive he is the commander of the evangelist's 
nights. Now, at first, I questioned if this was even true. Because for all we know, Joker could be lying, but... No, it's totally true. Sho is 100% the commander of the Evangelist's Knights. Now, this is a gigantic can of worms that I don't even know how you would dig into because it raises so many questions. <laughs> like, does, does Sho also have... I mean, Sho must also be in some way pyrokinetic because otherwise, like, wh like why would he be leading them? Why is he even helping them if they killed his mom? Like, if and, and they're after Shinra? Does he know? Does he care? Is he brainwashed? Like, what's going on with Sho? And Sho, why does he look like such a badass? Because <laughs> he does look pretty cool in that shot. And I I gotta say, the, this, this little conversation with Joker and the reveal of Sho, it's... It, like show being the commander of the evangelists again leads up to my favorite moment from the episode being the dinner scene because shinra actually tells them what's been going on now in any other show shinra would have kept that to himself he wouldn't have said nothing so as much as we can complain about cliches in this show and believe me this show has a lot of cliches in its characters and its fan service but with this moment here this was such a breath of fresh air that Shinra actually tells the Eighth what's going on, and it cemented the Eighth as less of a workforce and more of a family, which I really appreciated because the whole Eighth is like, okay, then if you believe that show is out there, then that's fine. Now we're gonna keep hunting the Evangelist, but we're gonna do so knowing that we also have to save your brother, which I was like, yeah, that's cool stuff. But something tells me show ain't gonna make it easy on them. But with that said, everybody, that's basically all of my thoughts. Now, initially I was gonna give this episode a rank of C cause I thought it was just sorta okay for the first half. And there's stuff that I, I thought was just kind of silly, like the seventh just seemed kind of goofy and, and like antagonistic for no reason. There's stuff I didn't like, but overall, I have to give it a B because honestly, all the stuff with Joker and Shinra and the eighth uh, towards the end of the episode and uh, Hinawa, like all that stuff really elevated the episode in my opinion. But yeah, that's pretty much all my thoughts. But before we wrap up today's video, as always, I have to give a big shout out to the good folks over on Patreon, namely those in the Earl Grey tier. Calvin Atkinson, Crowbar of Irony, Dominic, Urza, Ginkotaku, No For Nothing, Maria Teresa, Mirth Mouser, Nye, Omner Garamond, Cell, Shadow Creative, Sipco Games, Somastan, Steven, Tristan, and Veridan. Thank you all so much for your continued support over on Patreon, and if you too would like to join the T-Squadron, then by all means go ahead and check out the first link in the description, check out our Patreon page, see all the cool rewards you can get over there, as well as access to our Patreon exclusive Discord. But on that note, everybody, that's going to be a video. So I hope you all enjoyed today's video. And if you did, then you've probably been on the internet long enough to know what to do already. So I ain't going to tell you, but I will say that it is appreciated. And if you're feeling stressed out today, you go have yourself a warm cup of tea. And I will talk to you all again real soon.